Yeah, great. Thanks. Happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> my talk's a little bit outside of some of the, some of the others. It's it's uh, talk um, about a pretty long term project that I've been engaged in on um, multiple aspects of the Balinese cockfight. Now, I'm sure uh, most of the anthropologists here read Clifford Geertz's uh, Deep Play Notes on the Balinese Cockfight, which came out in the mid 70s. Um, it's a seminal article that I read as an undergraduate in anthropology. It, it engages with many dimensions, the Balinese cockfight. Um, and, and I've been doing field work in Indonesia since the early mid 1990s and uh, attended a number of cockfights, oh, let me put my timer on, um, over the years. Um, and I, you know, as doing these other projects, I always came back to the, the issue of, of the cockfight because it, it, it engages with so many issues in, in Indonesian and Balinese ethnography and wider issues in cultural anthropology and, and related disciplines. Um, and then, but thinking about, and we shot cockfights over the years. It's kind of, you know, it's like going to a, a baseball game in America. You, you go, you, you witness it and you leave. Uh, I brought my kids to cockfights when they were little during our, my field work in the 90s. Um, but how to actually uh, uh, explain it in an original way uh, to a new generation of audiences was a puzzle. So we, we decided to do a sensory ethnography um, of the cockfight. And what I'm gonna show today is um, both the sensory ethnography and then this additional multimedia project on the Balinese cockfight um, that, that emerged out of that project. So uh, first I'm gonna share, uh, turn on screen sharing. Wait, where is that share screen? Okay, there we go. Um, can you guys see this? So yeah, because I lost I lost my uh, Zoom screen, but you guys can see this. Just say yes. I don't I don't see my my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, so this is the visual ethnography. Ethnography. It, it, we, it's in five parts. The first part is um, how the blade is forged. Let me make it this a little bit bigger. Um, and remember, there's no narration, no voiceover, it's just sight and sound. So I'll just give you a little bit of a sense. So this is basically the blade is forged through, they take a um, part from a motorcycle and uh, blacksmith it out. And so we, we bring people into that and then um, the blade is made, it's a, four inch, extremely razor sharp blade. And um, then we have the star of our show. And this, this took a good um, a good 20 or 30 takes to get the chicken to, get the chicken to do that. So they, they don't really respond to command. Second part of the sensory ethnography is um, the care and feeding of the bird itself. And we used a range of techniques we used um, uh, several different uh, GoPros. Uh, we, sh we shot it from kind of from the perspective of, of the fighting cock. From, um, and so we show how it's fed, how it's given um, a range of, of in Geertz's in Geertz's time, um, they would they would feed cock, they would feed them chili peppers and and other uh, other foods that would kind of they, they thought would would make the the fighting cock more aggressive. Now they use steroids, and uh, though we didn't see it, they claim they also use uh, methamphetamine to get the cocks really activated. Um, the third part, uh, and yeah, and, and you can see uh, some of the steroids right here. Um, they're specific. These are sold for for the purposes of of making a more aggressive uh, fighting game cock. Uh, the third section, following kind of this Geertz's interpretive perspective, is is the kind of anonymous Balinese cockfighter who we don't really, we see, but we never. There's no interviews. We just we see him uh, doing prayers before the cockfight. Um, we see him cutting hair. He's also a barber and his and his as his other occupation. Um, and 
Uh, he's also a musician. Um, and then he goes to the cockfight and the fourth part is on the cockfight itself, the sights and sounds. Uh, I'm not going to show him. <laughs> and then uh, at the end of the cockfight, the losing, the losing chicken, I'm not going to show just for animal rights perspective, the losing uh, gamecock is, is uh, it's uh, butchered and then put in the bag with the winning gamecock and brought home, put in the bag, and then brought home and cooked for dinner after the, the, uh, the winning um, fighting cock is uh, sewn up and treated to fight another day. And then at the end, it's just uh, uh, cooked into dinner. So that's, that's the sensory ethnography, half hour um, approach. But when we came back and I, and um, when we came back and, and I looked at it and we, we edited and put it together, I was pretty dissatisfied. It, it didn't really meet some of the primary goals of, of, of what I think a contemporary anthropology and one of the main ones is, is holism and integration. If, you know, so on the one hand, we had this dense and at time quite opaque, at least according to my students, um, uh, article by Clifford Geertz. On the other, we have this sensory ethnography, but there are all these domains that were unexplored um, in the uh, film itself. And so I was like, I was talking to my small team. I have a, a, a shooter and an editor and, and um, was like, what, why don't we do a more multimodal approach when, and, uh, and explore all these other domains that Geertz either touched on tangentially or were contested or didn't touch on at all. For example, there's nothing on animal rights in, in Geertz. Um, there's nothing on, except for kind of a throwaway line on, on the, the aspects of compulsive gambling. Um, and it's a real problem for some Balinese men. In fact, uh, one of my, my uh, first field assistant was as I found out later and had to fire him, was an inverted cockfighter. He lost everything. He lost, um, he lost all his possessions. He lost land. He got he he was engaged to be married, and that that went off because the family didn't want uh, uh, his fiance to marry a cockfighter. So it really causes problems for people. Um, and Geertz only explored some of those, or not not at all, as I mentioned. So we came up with a interactive program using a. Uh, program called uh, Clint, which I'm sure some of you have seen. It's a, it's a, it's a website, a interactive design um, a program, quite easy to use. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of programming. And we came up with a site that we call Tajin Interactive. And I'm going to go through it um, briefly. So here's the opening when you, it's, um, and I can, I'll send the uh, link um, uh, after my talk in, in the chat. So you start with, uh, you come to this page, which is live on the internet, and there's a intro page and kind of bring people into it. There is. Uh, then you go to a split screen. On the one side is, um, is the film we just I just showed briefly. On the other is um, exploring the cockfight. So you click on on this, and then you go to this splash screen which has the five elements and an additional one um, that, I, uh, that are in the Tajin film itself. So the first one is, is how the blade is forged. Second is how the chicken is cared for. Third is the man, the cockfighter. Fourth is um, the cockfight itself. And the fifth is the transformation of the raw to the cook. Um, and then finally, the sixth is actually the Geertz article itself um, that so students can access that at any point. And one of the points of this this sort of approach is that you can approach this. Um, you, students can look at this approach it totally non-linearly. So they can read Geertz and watch the film, which is kind of like how standard anthropology has been taught for for decades. Um, or they could watch one of these supplemental films, and I'll show you how how this works. So as you click, let's say clicking on how the blade is made. You come to a secondary splash screen with some pop-ups, uh, kind of almost throwaway, but they're just uh, to orient 
um, uh, students or, or viewers to different aspects. And then each down here are um, secondary films. And we have about 15 films in a range of styles. So when you click on this, you come to um, kind of a standard combined with some uh, uh, graphics over the interview. And so, yeah, so it's how a blade is made, the lore of the blade, kind of magical religious context of, of, the, of the blade. Um, well, I, let's go to the second one, which is how the towards the same, same sort of approach. Which ethnographic film let's let's play around with stylistic devices and stylistic elements so um for example on this one uh the range this is on actually Balinese manhood and masculinity which, which um Geertz does does deal with quite extensively in the deep play article and um, we decided on this one to use a more archival approach in the beginning at least so we bring people into the world of Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson in the 1930s when we did the field work in the time. All I really want is to grab the film. We explore how we looked at the top. What the hell is going on? We went on. What it is is finding out about how what other. Find out how the people are really quite different than you are, what they're all about. I find that an absolutely intriguing thing to do. And then we move on to exploring some of Geertz's uh, main ideas um, in the cockfight about masculinity. So we interview cockfighters and you actually see, you know, our symbol still the, the our chicken still the symbol of masculinity around here. And it's, it's about violence, um, uh, aggression, uh, deception, sexuality, domination, all, all domains that make up uh, Balinese masculinity. Um, and then we move uh, to the cockfight itself. And this is where we start getting even more creative. We do um, some cut and paste animation. In, in Cockfighting is an ancient sport practice around the globe for over 6,000 years. We uh, uh, whiteboard on uh, bedding, uh, fights, and things like that. Show you a piece that's pretty relevant given the politics. Over 50 years now. later, cockfighting was both right changed today, and since showed up uh, staunchly blue town. We imagine, or if a group who voted for Clinton imagine, uh, showed up at a fight hosted Donald by Fox Trump News fans, would emotions would immediately run high. Participants would project uh, their own political the background identity. Is, um, in the Geertz piece, uh, cockfights, you were, you know, men are not fighting them. men, men are fighting each other. I mean, they're not fighting, uh, the chickens are fighting each other. And the, the, the affiliations at that point were largely uh, uh, village affiliations and village alliances and clan um, uh, competitions. And now it's been uh, very anonymized. People go for miles because of uh, ease, ease of transport. So the, the cockfights are these, are much more like sports events. And then people today affiliate um, according to their political beliefs rather than local affiliations. Um, then we move uh, uh, to a couple of different areas. So we explain structural anthropology, the raw, the cooked. The Balinese cockfight and structural approach. Part of the meaning and enjoyment of the Balinese cockfight comes from one of these living emblems of masculinity loses. Finally, it's here. I have about one minute left. We do have peace on uh, animal rights, uh, global animal rights. Uh, dubbed having their natural appendages cut off. Territory. You, do, you, do, you do see that these animals are usually it's a crime in most places. It may, may seem 
from PETA and from the Humane Society. So let me come back to turn this off, come back to Zoom. Oh, shit. Okay, wait, now where is, where should my Zoom go? Well, um, so, so I guess the takeaway message is uh, for my students is for, for it to be as creative as possible, as open as possible, and use all of the tools or as many as you can engage with and learn um, in our uh, uh, digital armature. And uh, we can create really great content that um, our digital native students will really understand and engage with. Okay, one second left. Thank you. Robert, thank you so much. And there's already a lot of interest in following up through the web link that you mentioned. So uh, please do uh, provide uh, that. Is the whole film that you screen portions of also there as well as the interactive experience? The interactive uh, is the the whole film is um, DER documentary resources, main ethnographic film distributor. I'm sure you most of you know it's it's being distributed by DER. So uh, you know you can get it on Canopy. Um, and for those you know. For those of you uh, who have access to Canopy through your library, um, but the, the so on the website itself is the first like five minutes. It's a teaser for the film, but the entire uh, interactive project is available um, on the website.